Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, everyone. This is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really happy that today I'm going to be interviewing Chris Quintana, and she is a financial consultant at CQ Consulting Services. And I wanted to kind of just set up our conversation today because Chris has, let's just say, a wealth of financial knowledge that is uncommon. And for many of us, we think that we're financially savvy, and maybe we even took that finance class in high school that was an elective, and we could balance a checkbook when we graduated from high school or not. But I wanted to talk to Chris today because she's the creator of the Financially Sassy Women's Club, and she has some really good strategies that we all need to know about and she has a brand new book coming out so Chris tell me what the name of your book is the name of my book is the less you know the more they make and you can put that script so I wanted you to tell me that because the less you know the more money they make and you can flip that script. So what exactly does it mean and who are they? Okay, that's a good question. So the less you know, the more they make. They would be the financial industry, banks, financial advisors, um, the government, the IRS. That is who they are. So why is it that I I think I'm pretty smart. Okay, I'll just put it out there. I, I'm a pretty smart person, but when it comes to money, I know that I don't know as much as I need to know because here I am, I'm 62 years old and I'm like, okay, well, how am I going to retire? And I know that you have a lot of information about that. But am I that different than the average American that I don't have a lot of money saved up? Actually, no, you're not. You, you, you're not alone, for sure. There is um, actually, on average, you know, people are um, they're supposed to save. They say that you should have saved, um, say you make $55,000 a year. You um, should have at least $385,000 to retire. And there's a formula for that. But most people don't even realize that. It's really, it's supposed to be seven times your, your annual salary. But most people do not have enough money in the bank to cover a $400 shortfall. If their water heater breaks, if they, you know, something happens with their car, um, they have to use the credit card to take care of that. You're, I'm not saying you're in that situation, but you're not alone when it comes to, um, you know, not having maybe a big retirement. And the reason for that is because, I mean, nobody should be upset with themselves, you know, for having a um, bad finance finance troubles now because we really weren't taught this and in our whole entire system the government financial system has all been rigged against the average person that's why if you know you said your elective class that you took in high school that that's the thing um finances are not taught in school and and what is taught in school is so basic that um I mean, how much of it do you remember? I mean, I guess they taught you how to um, to how to balance a checkbook. Right. It's like, I mean, how does that help you? Okay, you can balance your checkbook, but how does that help you in real life? I mean, if you think about it, when you go to college, who is the first people that you see, at least when I went to college, the first people that I saw were these tables 
with credit card companies offering like a t-shirt or, you know, they were giving away things for you to come and get their credit card because they wanted to help you get credit. You needed to start working on your credit score, right? And so it was my first time having a credit card. But um, unfortunately, most people don't, it's like free money to them. They don't understand how to use a credit card. They, um, and then they immediately get themselves in debt besides getting into um, debt just for going to school. You know, they have their school loans they got to pay for. Now they have these new credit cards. And I actually talk about a specific time um, in my book about how how that happens to college students. You know, they're immediately in debt. And if they would have learned something in high school before they entered the real world, uh, maybe they would make different choices. And so it was, it's something that I think is um, – Financial literacy is something that needs to be taken um, seriously because if not, since the system is rigged against us and we don't understand how money really works, um, we're going to be taken advantage of without even knowing it, without even realizing it. And like you said, you are a smart, you are a smart person. But do you know there's so many smart, broke people out there? And it's because Financial education is not taught, and it was the part that makes me mad is that it was designed this way on purpose. So why was it designed for most Americans to be, I guess, middle class or poor? Why weren't we taught how to use money? What's, what is the big design to keep us poor and, or, you know, so that we don't have any money and we have to go to work and, and rely on 401ks and different things like that um, for retirement. And I, I wanted to ask you specifically about 401ks because every time the stock market crashes, the 401ks go, 401ks go down. And then how, how would you ever grow your money if it keeps on going away and then you have to build it back up again right well i mean that's a, that's actually a really good question because personally um the 401k is a really good example of how our system is kind of rigged against us because it's not necessarily a bad thing because we don't know any other way but if we knew other ways we may do something differently but the government came up with this along, you know, well, you have to read my book to figure out, find out exactly where the 401k, but to make, you know, a long story short, um, you can put your money in a 401k and you will pay your taxes later. You don't have to pay the taxes now. So now you're going to have a big check. Your check's going to be bigger. You're putting away for your future. That's a good thing. But do you think that taxes are going to go up or down? I mean, have you seen, do you know what the national debt is? And it keeps no, the going national up. debt has gone up in the last couple of years and that some taxes were cut and that they're complaining about Social Security and Medicare and they want to get rid of that system. Um, but I imagine that taxes are going to go up. I mean, they're not going to go down because if there's ever going to be a dent put into the this debt that we have, taxes are going to have to go up. And right now, actually, taxes, uh, you may have heard it before, but they say taxes is basically on sale right now because they're the lowest that they've ever really been. And um, they're only going to go up. I mean, think about the... If you want to see something really interesting, go online, go type in um, national debt calculator in Google, type in national debt calculator. It'll take you to a government page where it has the calculator and it is interesting to see because you just see the number. It's like being at the casino, sort of just watching the numbers. They never stop. The debt is just going up and up and up as we speak. You know, I mean, it's it shows how much is coming in and how much is going out. And there is no way that we can continue in the cycle without making 
um, the taxes go up. The highest time in history was the taxes were 94%. Can you imagine paying 94% of your money in taxes? That would be 94 cents on the dollar, right? Exactly. Uh -huh. I can't even imagine how anybody would live if, if everything was taxed. But it seems to me like everything is, we have like, I guess, invisible taxes that we don't even realize that we're paying because I know every time I get my um, internet bill or, or my phone bill, I, I normally call up the provider and yell at them about how expensive it is and why am I paying this much? And they always say, well, it's only this much, but this much are taxes or you right. go to the gas pump and a large percentage of the amount you pay for gas is, is a tax and we don't even put two and two together and, and equate that those are taxes. So I wanted to go back to that 401k and you said something that was kind of interesting. You said that when we have a 401k, we're putting money into it and often our employer will match part of that. I, I remember that from when I had my 401k. So I was all excited because I could see that gee, they're matching this percentage um, of the savings every month. And, and my taxes that they took out was less. But so what does that mean? When do I pay those taxes if I don't pay for them when I put when I save the money? You're going to pay for them later, later on, whenever you decide to retire and you want to start getting your money, start using your money, you're going to pay for it then. And, and, and it's interesting how many people are so surprised when they start taking that money. They see this nest egg that they have, their 401k that they've grown this big, and how much of that is going to go to taxes. They're actually, when you, when you sign up for a 401k, and please, I'm not saying that it is a bad thing, but there are other choices. I want people to realize that there are other places that you can do this, but um, you need to do something or you're going to work till you're 90. You're going to work till you die. If you don't have, if you don't have a plan for your future and they say that you should be saving 10% of everything that you make for your future. And that's not a 10% savings account that is you can for your vacation trips and for I mean this is strictly for your future self but if you can put it in places where you can grow it tax advantaged and I don't mean tax deferred so much but tax free see they, they're the our tax code has been designed so that um, if we study if we learn we don't have to pay as much taxes it's it's kind of like you've heard the rich get richer and the poor stay poor. Well, the reason for that is they've learned all of these little loopholes, which I share a lot of them in my in my book. Um, some loopholes that most of us don't even know about, and no one's going to tell us about them. They don't have to. It's legally, it, they're legal loopholes, but they do not have to be advertised. And you don't, they don't have to tell you about them. The government is not going to advertise it. There's actually a lot of. Um, businesses out there. I mean, I, I, this is, this is a topic for me that I, I'm super passionate about and I could just go on and on and, um, I need to stay on track with you. So we're talking 401ks here and the 401ks are not necessarily a bad thing, but if we know of other options, there's way better options out there. So don't do nothing. So we're told to number one, I remember this because I was told that my, I was supposed to grow up and get a good job. And part of that was if I wanted to, I could either learn a trade or if I wanted to go to college, I could go to college and I opted to go to college and I got, you know, I, I've got that wonderful student debt like uh, many people do because I, I went into a, profession that required, you know, an edu education. And it's funny that you mentioned about working until you die. 
because in the 90s, I actually remember getting my social security statement. And when I saw my social security statement, I'd been working in Florida my entire adult life. And I saw it and it said, well, when you're however old the retirement was in the 90s, you're, you'll get something like $900 a month in social security. And I remember I looked at that and, and I thought about the cost of living. And I said, oh, my God, I have to figure out. I didn't think, oh, I have to figure out how to save more money because I was struggling to earn enough from my jobs. I had three jobs. And I was like, okay, I can't do three jobs for the rest of my life. So that's when I actually went back to school and got a master's degree so that I could be a teacher because I knew that I could be a 90-year-old teacher standing in front of a college classroom if I had to because I knew that I would I couldn't see myself working at Publix or at Walmart being a greeter um, but I could see myself in a cl- front of a classroom and that really honestly is why I got a master's degree was so that I could work until I was 90 at some point wow. because I knew that I would not be able to live off of social security and then later I did have a 401k that disintegrated in in the last crash of in what 2007 to 2009 it just got wiped out. And so again, I really can uh, understand how people that, you know, we're taught, go get a good job, put money into a 401k, ride the waves of the ups and downs of the stock market. But you say that we don't have to do that. Can you give me a hint of some of the things that we might look into that you that you answer in your book? Yeah, I. Um, it's funny that you. I mean, not funny. It's you're talking about this wave. This wave is something that we are told you have to ride. Just ride it out. You have to ride it out. I mean, everybody would just have to ride it out. But the question is, do you think that wealthy people have their money? Riding in the market on this roller coaster. I mean, if you think about just this last this last few months, whenever um, the stock market took another nosedive, um, what did you hear on the news? There was like three or four politicians that got in trouble because why? Because somebody told them to get their money out of the market. Right. Somebody's telling them you don't want to stay in the market. Why? Because the cost of loss, a cost of losing money, you don't, if you lose half your money, you don't just have to get half back. If you have 100000 and you lose 50000 if you only get half back, you're only going to have 75000 So you have to make a whole lot more than what you lost to get back to just where you were. Anyhow, um, my point is that um, you, we want to learn how to put our money in places that the wealthy are putting their money. And there are different places. I used to talk about um, when I first got into the industry, one of the first things that I learned about is how the wealthy use life insurance to, um, to grow their money. But for the average, average American, I, I personally, if you um, are young, I think that using life insurance you, it, when you're young or if you have a lot of money, you can use life insurance this way to be able to grow your money tax-free. But if you're not young and you don't have a lot of money, don't let somebody try to put you into a product that is not going to put you in a better situation financially. And um, some of the ways that I've been able to to grow my wealth has been through real estate it's been actually purchasing purchasing um, assets that have created passive income for me. And, you know, there's, I mean, real estate is a good way, but not everybody wants to be in real estate. There, um, 
it's how many of the wealthy people have created their wealth is through real estate. But um, there's also a lot of other places that people can save. So think about this, where if you want to, you don't, why, why do you not, why would somebody not want to keep their money in the stock market? Too much risk. I, I, it's too volatile up and down. And I get, I think traditionally um, people, it, it, you know, it's going to have dips ups and downs that's one of the things about the stock market and you have to be like have a magic mirror or a magic looking glass to to go okay when do i pull it out when do i put it in you know all of that so you know that it definitely will go up and will go down and that you'll have to rebuild eventually so if you don't want to have your money in the stock market where do most people put their money well, I, I see these at, what are they, the big 0.09% now? I personally, yeah. it's like, why bother? You're almost, so, stick it under your mattress is almost as good as that. You so know? you keep it, so, so, so people use like CDs, they use, um, they put it in a bank. There's trillions and trillions of dollars sitting in the bank. Who is happy about that? The bank? The bank. Oh my goodness, they know they're they are you are loaning your money to the bank basically for safekeeping. But they're taking your money and they're making money. They're loaning it to other people for 15, 20, 29 percent interest. Your money. And how much are you getting paid for it? Zero. Nothing. Practically I mean you can have a hundred thousand dollars. Oh nine percent. Right. If you got it in this great C D, right? To me those are such a joke because um there's this rule that I love to to teach people, and that is the rule of 72. And to sim, you know, to explain that simply is it tells you how long it's going to take for your money to double. So if you're to make math easy, say the bank pays us one percent. How many times does one go into 72? 72 times, right? So. It's going to take 72 years for your money to double. If you're, if you can make more money on your money, like the banks do, why wouldn't you? Well, part of the reason is because we don't hear about it because they want our money in the banks. They want our money in the stock market. They don't want our money in some of these safe strategies that wealthy people are using. And, and not, all you may hear of okay so the government they also sell bonds right why do people buy bonds i mean they get a decent okay return on them right but they buy them because they're safe now there are is a thing is a thing there is one of the investments that i have invested in is corporate notes but not every company has a good corporate note. So I'm not telling you to run out and buy a corporate note. You want to make sure that um, you, you're working with a team of advisors or a team of people that can bring you the opportunities at the right time. And don't try to do it yourself because you can lose a lot of money on it. But most of the time, they're just as safe as a bond. Not most of the time. If you get the right company... Um, they're as safe as a bond, but the industry does not want us to let anybody know about them. The only people that can know about these are accredited investors. This is multimillionaires. You know, these are people, I mean, and that really was something that really irritated me and got me kind of, I have to tell people about, you know, what's available to them because I, I, when, when I was younger, I saved $100,000 in the bank, and I was proud of myself. I hit $100,000. I even took a, I even have a picture of it now. You know, I took a screenshot of this, my bank account. So I had saved this, and I was like, to have my money in, HSBC was paying me 5% of my money. This was 2006, 2007. 
then the market fell out and it went down below you know below one percent and i thought i can't have my money in here so that's how i went into um the real estate but um i'm not even sure where the heck i was going with that i'm so sorry i um the point was that i knew that my money had to make more money than it was making in the bank and i had to find the places to do this but now days i will go out and bet bet companies where i put my money and make sure that i you know it's a safe place for my money to grow and um oh i know what i was going to tell you so hundred thousand dollars left in the bank right now you might maybe maybe depending on what bank you're in you might make a hundred dollars a month on your hundred thousand dollars well i have places where a hundred thousand dollars pays seven hundred dollars a month or one thousand dollars a month depending on the um the contract you know and the time you know like the one that pays seven hundred dollars a month it's only it's one um it's a one-year contract it's like a cd one year but you get you can actually receive a paycheck for if it's a one-year contract seven hundred dollars a month 707 a month and what would 707 dollars do for you a month Maybe it's not a lot, but for some people, I've been able to help some of my clients that didn't have an opportunity to save a lot of money for retirement, put them in um, plans that can pay them monthly now. They receive $1,200. I mean, depending on, I mean, it, it's all a little bit. It depends on the person that I'm working with, what we can do for them. But um, I have one particular client. You asked me earlier about if I'm you're, you're over 50 years old. I mean, isn't it kind of too late to start saving? You know, it's never too late, but um, the sooner you can start, the better. And sometimes we have to downsize. Sometimes we have to we have to learn how to. You know, we only have 10, 12 more years when we want to retire. We have to learn a new way of thinking and um, our mindset really, really can make a difference in being able to grow wealth and be able to keep it. You hear people that win the lottery and the money's gone within, you know, a couple of years or less. You know, it's like, what? Well, how do I mean, if I won the lottery, oh my, I would never, ever have to work again. I mean, Right now, I work because I want to, because I've created all of these uh, forms of of income. Once you once you create more passive income than your cost of living, you don't have to work anymore. And that was my goal. My goal. Um, I know you let me let me let you go back to your questions. I know you have some other questions you wanted to ask me. And I, I like I said, I, I'm passionate about it so I could get get to talking and Well, I think that's really interesting because what you're talking about is that you don't have to be afraid and that you're going to have to work for the rest of your life if you talk to somebody like you who can say, hey, you know, you have options. You're, you Just because you worked and you lost all your 401k money or you haven't started saving yet, it doesn't mean that, that you know, woe is me. It just means, like you said, you have to talk to somebody who can advise you properly. And you mentioned that you have a whole team of people at um, CQ Consulting Services, what are like kind of the backgrounds of the team members when you talk about a team? What are, what is their expertise when they're helping a client? Well, we have CPAs. Well, the the way we work is um, we um, we help people figure out like we do an analysis on like where they are, where they want to be. And, and we go through their whole financial, everything, including insurance on their vehicles, inter- health ins- We go through everything because we have somebody that can handle all of it. But once we get all the information, we bring it to the team 
and we come up with a plan for our clients, you know. I mean, we can see where we can save them money. Our biggest thing is to find their money for them. We don't want to be a burden. We don't want to cost them money. We want to find the money that, you know, covers, you know, we don't want to be an expense to somebody. We want to be able to show them how they can make their money work for them and stop all these leaks that they have going on because there's so many leaks that people don't realize. One of the biggest ones is taxes. People are paying way more in taxes than they have to, but you hear it all the time. I mean, why do you think Trump doesn't want anybody knowing what to even see his taxes. The reason why is because he doesn't pay any taxes. But why? Because the law, he does it legally. He has, he knows the loopholes and he uses them. And why shouldn't we be able to use them too? And that's my goal is just bringing these, these type of things to people that are willing and open. You got to be open-minded because if you think you know everything, if you think you know anything, everything, you're not going to be willing. You're not going to be open to other suggestions or ways of which, which it, to me, when somebody is like that, it's okay. Go ahead. I mean, somebody's going to pay the taxes. I guess it's going to be you. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to help you. And there's nothing wrong with paying taxes. We need to pay taxes. Yeah. But we don't need to pay more than our fair share. Right. Well, that, well, that I think there was a, a famous quote by someone that, that if you pay more in taxes than your fair share, then that's like a, that should be illegal or something. Uh, I don't know the exact quote, but so, so if somebody wants to talk to you about their um, financial situation, how they can find out about some of these alternative ways to invest their money so that they don't have to worry, how can they get a hold of you? Well, you can go to cqconsultingservices.com and it's services with an S. Or if you get my book, the less you know, the more they make, all the information will be in there how you can get a hold of me. Okay, super. Because I, I've had the privilege of, of reading um, most of your book and it, it is actually pretty good reading considering that it's such a serious topic. And I did, before I let you go, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, um, about your adventures. You actually have a passion for orangutans. Um, and tell me a little bit more about that before I let you go. About the orangutans? Yeah. Okay. So ever since I was a child, I have always loved primates and um, orangutans were orangutans and chimps were always my favorite. But um, in 2013, um, when I lost my job in 2012, I think it was 2012, um, it was time for me to start traveling. And I decided that I was going to go on a mission trip. I wanted to go on a mission trip. I wanted to go on some kind of humanitarian trip. But when I started looking up orphanages, I also wanted to find a place that if I traveled across the world, I wanted to be able to go visit my primates. So when I started looking in Indonesia, where the orangutans are originally, I mean, where they're from, I found a orphanage that I could go and volunteer at. And so I did that. And that was like my dream come true since I was a child. It was like the one dream, the one thing that I never thought that I would be able to do. I used to go, I lived in San Diego. I lived right by the zoo and I had a, I had a pass, season pass. So I would go walk there all the time, probably every week, but I would always go to the primate section and I just loved them. And I finally got to go and spend time with them in the jungles. And I realized that they were, that they're endangered. They're critically endangered. Like our greed, human greed is causing them to lose their habitat. And they are now on the critically endangered list. And, I'm, and so I, my passion, I really, besides helping 
humans, besides helping um, people with their money, I love to be able to help the orangutans in their habitat and be able to, um, you know, donate towards that, you know, keeping them around. And I like to go, I like to travel there. I try to go once every year, every couple years to go and um, see them. I've made buddies. Orangutans are, um, they have a great memory. They, they, and they're so, people think that they're, they're, orangutan means orange man of the jungle. And they really are like, I mean, I, I personally don't think I came from a monkey, but um, we are only 3% genetically different than they are. So when you look in their eyes, they're just like a little person looking at you and they all have different personalities and they, I, I just love it. So I know that has nothing to do with money, but it's one thing that my money has allowed me to be able to help out with and help create, um, you know, a place for them. And I hope that, you know, they don't go extinct because that would be a shame for us to lose another exotic animal just because of greed. So that's, that's my orangutan story and I'm sticking to it. (laughs) Well, I think that's important and it's a good way for us to, to end our conversation is that it isn't money is money and it's not always just about you know living our daily lives and saving money but it is about that if you have create this legacy and you and you're able to create money and have passive income you can travel you can use your money to do good and i think that's the important thing is if, if you're able to, to use your time and energy and money, you can do good. And for you, you said that you volunteered at an orphanage, and I take it the orphanage was for little children. And then you also got to um, enjoy learning more about the orangutans there also. So, so it's amazing to me because I know most of us, we, we see ourselves uh, not as just surviving, you know, that we're going to work until we die. And, and the good news is, is that with the type of work you do with the financial consulting, we can find out, hey, here's some things that we can do. And of course, if the younger you are, when you get this financial education, the better, but it's not too late, even if you're older. That's what I really like about your message. So remind everyone again, how they can reach out to you. You can reach out to me at CQ Consulting Services, or you can find me on Facebook, Chris Quintana, Financially Sassy Woman, um, because of the Financially Sassy Women's Club. If you just type in Financially Sassy Woman, it should pull me up. Um, you know what? There was something, there was one more thing, you know, you were saying about the the um, orphanage. I actually did volunteer at an orphanage for children, but I also volunteered at an orphanage for orangutans. And um, I got to, the reason why it was such a a gift for me is because um, the woman that um, started the, has been out in the jungle for over 40 years, you know, studying the orangutans. That's who I got to work with, Dr. Galdicus. And um, she's she's just an awesome woman doing some amazing things for people. But the other thing I wanted to say is that for me, money is not about things. It's really not about things for me. It's it's never been. Even in the beginning, I'm not I'm not motivated by a Lamborghini. Some of my clients are, and I can help them get it. But that's not my motivation. I'm living in a mansion. It's not my motivation. What motivated me more than anything was um, not wanting to be a burden on anybody ever. Because, you know, I, I mentioned to you about having MS. It's like I never wanted anybody to have to take care of me. Because to me, that's 
the worst thing to have to have your own family take care of you when you can't take care of yourself. And um, so that's what it's all been about since the, you know, the beginning. It's not all about, it's not all about things. It's about life, what you can do in life. And that's the type of people that I like to work with actually are people that want to help other people and create, create change and create um, more, you know, giving back to, to community and to society. So anyway, sorry, I, I don't know why I wanted to throw that in there just because it's not, it's not all about things. Cause if you, if you're looking for those type of things, I prefer to buy several asset properties to be able to pay for these things versus live in a mansion. I'd be living in a mansion by myself. And I mean, how fun is that? Might look good. But I'm all with myself, so it's not um, not um, for me. So, well, anyways, it's nice to be on here. Thank you so much for having thank, me. Thank, thank you, and 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 again, I think it's a really good reminder for people that money is money, and it isn't always about things, but it's how you can use it. Because if you have money, you can do a lot more good with it than. If you don't have it, you know, you can help um, leave a legacy. You you can have assets. You can have passive income. You can travel the world. You can help other people and animals and whatever your, your passions are. So I'll have to invite you back another time and we can dig deeper in it. But meanwhile, your book will be available on Amazon and people can go to cqconsultingservices.com and you have some classes there and you have some other information. And um, so I, I highly recommend that everybody go check out the book. And again, remind me again of the title of your book. I, I, I love to hear it from you. The less you know, the more money they make. And you can flip that script. Okay, I love that. So everybody, remember, you can flip that script so that you're making the money and not them. So I'll leave everybody with that. This is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a beautiful day. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.